Today I'm in the Nine Mile Canyon in central Utah to talk about Native American petroglyphs. This area is also known as the world's longest art gallery because for miles driving through these canyons you'll see Native American carvings on both sides of the rock showing different scenes, though none of them are as impressive as this one, the Great Hunt. Now why the Native Americans decided this canyon to do all their drawings I'm not sure. It's miles away from anything. You barely get any radio stations, and in all honesty, cell service sucks. There's nothing. But nevertheless, this is where they decided to put it. Unlike many other petroglyphs, where you look at it and don't really understand what's going on, this seems pretty easy to understand what is happening in the picture. Usually we see random shapes and designs with no real underlying story or message, but this is much different. It shows humans, animals, and potentially some sort of horned figure that's not a human, with a story based around some sort of fight, and it was of enough significance that someone took the time to scratch it into a rock, hopefully lasting forever. Now, according to the panel here at the site, historians believe this panel depicts a scene in late November or early December when herds of bighorn sheep meet for the fall mating season. This is the only time of year that rams, ewes, and lambs are all together in the same place. The large trapezoidal horn figure at the top of the panel is an example of a classic Fremont rock art style. Variations of this style are common in rock art of the Fremont period, which is 950 to 1200 AD. But not all humans were depicted this way, as shown by the three of the hunters with bows and arrows. On the internet, other people have varying theories. One is that the large trapezoidal figure with the horns of power in the center can be thought of as a hunting god, or Kachina, that controls or influences the movement of migration of animals. All of the animal figures are connected to one another, and eventually a path can be traced to the central figure, where they contact it at its feet and shoulder. There's three shield figures, which don't have bows and arrows. One of them has a club or an atlatl, and in this situation, the warrior's shields may be trying to protect their hunting grounds from these newcomers that may have a new type of weapon, the bow and arrow. There's another smaller panel to the lower right of the Great Hunt panel, which may represent battles that were fought to protect their resources, in which they proved more powerful and had an upper hand. Again, both of these are theories, because the people who made this aren't around to discuss it. Now, if you haven't had some sort of existential crisis or are a nihilist, thinking that this life has no real, real meaning, meaning and, and after, after this, this is just, just the cold, cold expanse, expanse, darkness of, of the, the void. void. Then you may want to leave some sort of lineage or record of what you did on this earth, some sort of proof that you were here and did something. And to this day, we do that. We leave monuments, we carve our names into things, we build memorials. And that's exactly what happened here. Someone, maybe a thousand years ago, took the time to carve this image into this rock, and I drove 40 some odd miles through the middle of nowhere to talk about it, and you're sitting right there listening about it. So, their lineage continues on. Their history, what they did, is still being talked about, and is still alive in some way, shape, or form. If you have a theory as to what it may be depicting, go ahead and leave a comment. Otherwise, feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. As always, until next time, get lost.